All right, hi everybody, and welcome to episode one of the Erasma podcast uh, with the EdTech Mentors Network. So I'm Victoria Olson. I'm going to be your host today, and I'm going to run you through some of how to get started with Erasma and why you can use it, or why you should use it in your classroom, and different ways you can use it. And we're just going to introduce the rest of our panel today. Uh, so starting with me, I'm a grade three and four teacher and technology teacher at West Langley Elementary in British Columbia. Um, I'm very passionate about technology and I co-founded BC EdChat as well in a hope to bring people together in the province of British Columbia and connect them with the world. I got involved with EdTech Mentors as a way to help British Columbian educators get connected with uh, how to use technology and get them started from the beginning steps. So we're going to go to Craig now on the next person on our panel. Sure, I'm Craig Yen. I'm a fifth grade teacher from California and Happy to be part of this panel and to assist and to learn a little bit more about Erasmus myself. John, please. I guess that it would go to me. I'm John Mirate. I'm a teacher in, uh, out in Cabazon, a place near uh, Palm Springs. I teach at a tribal school, and I'm very curious about augmented reality and using it in museum and supplementing instruction in the classroom. All right. Uh, I'm Josh Gauthier. I teach in Denmark, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm a business educator, and I cover grades 3 through 12. Uh, at least I will at different points this year. And I kind of wear a tech coach hat. I haven't founded anything, but I consider myself a really good follower. Uh, my name is Scott Capro. I am uh, a middle school math teacher. I'm implementing a, uh, a flipped classroom this year, as well as project-based learning. Uh, I'm looking forward to figuring out how I could use uh, augmented reality to uh, possibly help me with the flip and uh, get the kids motivated. Awesome, thank you. And we also have one more member of our panel who is jumped out for one moment. Uh, her name is Sandy Hertz, and she has been working extensively with me in getting the EdTech Mentors Network started. So uh, if she happens to jump back in, we'll let her give herself an intro. Uh, so the next thing we're just going to chat about quick is just some housekeeping business. Um, I'm just going to introduce you to the back channel on Twitter. So if you would like to add to the conversation, you can contribute at hashtag edtechmentors, uh, plural, and that's uh, on Twitter if you want to follow that. We also have a Google Plus community. It's EdTech Mentors Network. So if you want to give that a search on Google Plus, you can join our community and you can find the live feeds and the show outline there. Um, and then just to give you another bit of an idea of what the outline is, we're going to be having two Google Hangout broadcasts, one today, one tomorrow, both at the same time. So it runs from 6.30 p.m. Pacific time to 7.10 roughly. So we're going to hopefully squeeze everything into those two times. Uh, the next thing is the overall purpose. So why are we getting people to watch us do this? Uh, we're going to get viewers set up with their own Erasmus accounts and hopefully be begin making auras in meaningful ways with their kids. So that is kind of the shape. Uh, guys, did you have anything to add to that? Did I miss something? No, sounds good. Sounds good here. OK, fabulous. All right, so we're going to get started with um, what is augmented reality? So from my experience, augmented reality is a boxed up definition I can give. It's difficult to envision that if you're not familiar with it, but that's my definition. So do you guys want to offer what you think it is and we'll move forward? Sure. Uh, I, I think it's just, actually I think it goes back to like the old Virtual Boy video games and things like that. I think people really crave, you know, making, you know, the term augmented reality, adding on to reality. I think people always, there's this utopian fantasy where we can put on a pair of glasses and be somewhere else. And I think anything that helps us get closer to that, humans naturally crave that, and I think children even more so, and students. So I think it has just an amazing, engaging possibility um, to, to grab students in and experience something in a way that without technology they couldn't. Cool. Anybody that's else a, have anything to add? Yeah, that's a great way to put it, Josh. And, and the fact that the students are actually going to be part of the, the creative process to get involved you know, with that is, uh, it's pretty exciting stuff. 
it seems like you're adding another layer. Oftentimes, augmented reality is talked about as a QR code on steroids. And then so I just like that where it is that you're bringing something to life and then allowing them to be part of that creation process. That was a good point, Scott. Oh, I'm using it is using things like QR codes to bring up you know, other information when the kids scan and when they scan it, it brings up other information like a video or a uh, some text or something like that to give them a deeper understanding of what they're looking at. Excellent. One, one of the uh, I, I found a really great uh, example that I'm going to share out on the the uh, the chat feed, um, where you know because I'm a math teacher, what he does is he kind of works it backwards where he shows a completed math problem. And then when they put the aura in front of it, it actually starts back at the beginning of the math problem to show how um, how the entire thing developed. It was uh, and again utilizing a flipped classroom. I think that would be useful. Yeah, and we have some flipped class examples from. Um, I, I'm sure if you've ever talked augmented reality with anyone on Twitter, you're familiar with Brad Wade and Drew Minock. Sure. Uh, two guys in some iPads.com. They are a fabulous resource for finding some examples of how to use this, and they will be brought up later in the show as well. So that's fantastic. Um, some of the types of things that we've been chatting about so far are pretty teacher-centered, um, and some of the examples that we're going to show today are very teacher-centered for the respect of privacy of students in our schools. So I do have samples of my own kids using augmented reality to supplement assignment work, but I don't get sharing those with this audience for the respect of them and FOIPA and all of those things. So hopefully you can understand that, but we're going to try to offer some extra ways that you can utilize this tool. All right. Can you guys still see me? My feed is cutting out. <laughs> yes, your feed is kind of right. cutting out. Points are oh, dropping well. in and out there. Um, we'll try to go ahead and add in if, if we yeah. need to. Okay, I appreciate that. All right, so we are going to um, going. We're just going to talk a little bit about different apps that can show augmented reality first, just so that you know there's a very varied amount of them out there that you can use. Uh, today we're going to be focusing strictly on Erasmus, but I just wanted to give some nods to other apps that are doing great work in the field of education. So actually, maybe I'll bug you, Craig. Do you know any of those apps? Uh, I was just about to tweet out some of those apps that you were going to go ahead and list for us. And then so one of those that I am familiar with is Daiquiri. Yes, and so Daiquiri is one she, of the She cubes. has one of her Daiquiri cubes right on over there. Yeah. And then I'm also familiar with Layer. Yep. Um, and then also with the Rasma. Yeah, and uh, if you haven't heard of um, AR flashcards, this is a really awesome app for young students, um, probably primary level. So this is this is the alphabet, and these come to life with the use of an app. Uh, so if you have any more questions about these apps or how you can kind of get started with them after the Erasmus tutorial, that's fine. Uh, we're focusing on Erasmus for the purpose that you can create student content with this app. Uh, with these other apps, the kids can't actually create their own. So that's why we chose to focus on Erasmus today. Um, so I'm just going to jump onto my other computer here. So at the bottom, you're going to see there is a nice little avatar of me. So I'm going to get rid of that avatar and kind of just show you um, some examples of what an aura can kind of look like. So. Uh, Hang on a second. Craig, can you kind of um, just tell us about a little bit about some examples that can be used in the class while I dig this up? I forgot to open this one. <laughs> sure, not a problem. One of the ways that I ended up using, um, are we talking about Erasmus or just augmented reality in particular? Yeah, either. Yeah. Any, oh, sure. any uses that you can use in the classroom. <laughs> okay. Um, one of the ways that I've seen Erasmus being used within the classroom is for book talk reviews. And then so what the kids are able to do is to actually create reviews by and then um, be able to link them to the front covers of the books. And then that way they're able to go ahead and share as to what it is that they know about those books and just to build that interest within reading. One of the ways that I did use um, augmented reality within our classroom is when we celebrated Dot Day. And then so there was an activity where it is that the students were able to go ahead and color in their, their own dots and just to see their faces as 
those dots were being brought to life was just really amazing. Yeah, it was a pretty cool one for sure. Anybody else have any other uses that they've employed for augmented reality so far or ideas of why they would use it? One of the things that I was thinking about doing with it is uh, you know, we've been, again, doing, uh, doing PBLs in my math class, and I was thinking about maybe creating a wall outside my classroom um, taking the the best videos that we you know that we make per week and and putting you know the auras out in the hallways so not only our students can can access them but you know students passing by and uh, you know, students from other math classes um, that's uh, just one of the things that I'm tossing around. Okay. Anybody else have any other whys or what they would use it for? You know what, I'm using it for uh, supplementing some information for a uh, uh, natural plant garden outside my classroom so that I will put a post with a QR code and then what will happen is, is a video will come up with some text and it will talk about the how the Native Americans have used the plant and the background of the plant, the family, the genus and that kind of stuff. Cool. Awesome. So I'm just going to mute my mic on this computer right now. I know this is confusing, but I had to set it all up so my other one didn't pick up feedback. So I'm just going to play one of the auras as a sample of what happens in my classroom. So if you can't hear the audio, that's okay. I just kind of want to give you the general idea of what it looks like. So I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to put him at the top. And what you see here is a poster from my classroom and on top of it there is a video and basically what's going on in the video is I'm explaining this part of the brain and to explain this part of the brain I've made a short little video. I don't know if you can hear the audio or not. I am the amygdala and I am a top security guard. <laughs> okay, so it's basically just a video of explaining what the content is on that part of the brain. And for those of you unfamiliar with it, that is from that is from the Mind Up program. Um, so my kids learn about all the different parts of the brain and they end up um, talking about the brain. It's all metacognition based, it's all neuroscience based, and I use AR to help them remember what each part of the brain is for and why they need, why it's important for them to use. So. That's just a sample there. Did you guys have any questions about those types of ones where you can overlay over top of posters and things like that? <laughs> no, that sounds pretty straightforward. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. Okay. I just want to make sure that all our people that are following are kind of getting to see what it can do. All right. So let's keep moving on. Um, so we've used, like I said, a lot of teacher-centered examples, um, but let's kind of chat a little bit more about student-centered examples and what those can kind of look like. Um, so Craig, you mentioned you used, um, I think it was probably the color app for Dot Day. Um, right. right. But if you were going to be, and this goes for the whole panel, if you're going to be creating something for your students to make it more student-centered, and not just information dissemination. We're talking creativity. We're talking something that kids can create. What kinds of lessons would you integrate that with? Does oh, anyone have any suggestions? Out. Who, who did? Craig dropped out. Oh. I'm actually have... I'm actually here. I just was oh. having a little coughing fit. <laughs> Let somebody else share first. Okay, John, would you like to jump in on how you would get students to create a little bit and some ideas surrounding that? You know, Victoria, I really feel that the kids should be creating the content and not me. It, 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 it's something that they need to know about, and it's really great for them to. They need to know the content, and they create the content for other students to explore and other public for the public to come in and explore so it isn't that, that I'm personally creating it but I teach them the basics 
and then have them create it. And by, I, I teach ninth grade, so it might be a, a lot different than something at the elementary level. Yes, and I agree. And, the, and like I said earlier, the ones that I've had my students create so far are actually video footage of them in person, so I didn't feel comfortable sharing it on this forum. I do have quite a bit of student-created content within the classroom. The example I showed was just something that was created at the beginning of the year as a way for the kids to differentiate between a structure in our classroom. So that's one of the ways I introduced them to the brain. So yeah, I gave that. Like I said, teacher-centered is just for the privacy respect. You know, that's um, a great idea. Mm -hmm. I was really um, thinking, just along the lines of bringing the walls to life and thinking mm -hmm. about open house, and as to that you only have so much limited wall space. And then I know in teaching fifth grade, uh, you can only hang up so many different things. And then so just to be able to bring some of those projects back to life. So for instance, right now we're working on the Explorers unit. And so where we have a little bit of, we have them writing a little bit and then, but what we can do is we can actually have videos of them um, reading their writing as well. Or even being able to bring in um, student created content itself that'll just go ahead and make that project that much more meaningful to those people as we're as we're watching it and looking at it. Sure, and I think that's really cool and similar to uh, Drew and Brad's idea of the step inside writing, where the kids are taking on the perspective of a character that they may write about. So it's no longer just writing a paragraph, it's actually becoming an actor and actually becoming somebody who uh, can get a little bit more involved in the story and invest in it. So that's kind of a neat idea. All right, I have a question. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm gonna definitely show my lack of knowledge about Orasma now, but uh, maybe you could explain what types of things you can use as an overlay. So I kind of get the general concept. <laughs> Excuse me. It works generally like a QR code. You have an app and you scan something. Mm -hmm. uh, but what types of things can show up when you scan? When you So if you set up an Aura on your device, it's different than setting it up on the Studio account, which we're actually just getting to in a minute here. Um, but you can use photography, you can use video, and that's pretty much what we're going to go through for today. Uh, but there's also the ability on Erasma to overlay 3D. Now, I am not an expert in that, so that's not going to be taught by me. I'm just going through the basic setup of the studio account and, and logging in onto the device and how to create auras on both of them and what it means to create an aura on each. So I hope that helps a little bit there. So oh, that um, thank you. That, that's okay. All right. So we're just going to go next to the difference between the studio account and the device. Uh, for those of you who have the kind of outline uh, document that got tweeted out a little while ago, it is also available on the Google Plus community. Um, it just has a little outline of what is the difference between the two. So the studio account is the web-based account, and basically you can create a class channel or a school channel, whatever you want to use it for there, where auras that are created can be seen on all the devices that are following the channel. Now I know that sounds really confusing, but you can imagine it to like someone following you on Twitter. So if someone's following you on Twitter, they see all your tweets, right? If someone's following your channel on Erasma, they see all your auras. Same kind of idea. Um, Basically, you can create more dynamic auras there. You can, uh, once you upgrade your studio account, you can create things with URL overlays. So just like a QR code, you can link things to websites. You can also have multiple overlays. So for example, I can have um, a picture, and then I can have a Twitter overlay and a Facebook overlay, and I have those linked to Twitter and Facebook of, say, your school. So there's a lot of things you can do with the studio account there. It's a little bit more stable. Uh, the device account is specifically device-based, so you're doing all the auras and creating them through there. There's less you can do with them in that you can overlay a photo or a video or things like that, but you can't do the URLs and things from the device just yet. Uh, as far as the device is concerned, any aura created on the device is only visible on the devices that are signed into that account. So in other words, you cannot add the aura to a specific channel. Um, it says you can add it to the channel, but you can't view it externally from somebody who's not signed into your account. So that's something that I know of as I was working on, and they're trying to make that a little bit more fluid for educators. I find the device, personally, is a little bit less stable for creating auras as well. Um, I've had some of my auras 
it, it freezes up or it doesn't work, and sometimes I have to quit the app. So I find if you're going to make one that you want to work all the time, make it on the studio account. It's just a little bit easier. So do you guys have any questions on the difference, or is there anybody on the Twitter feed that has questions about that? OK. I'll, I'll ask, because I'm the... I feel like sure. I'm the asker guy here. Uh, <laughs> so you have a studio and device. Mm -hmm. They're both accessed on a mobile, on a, on a tablet or phone, but the studio is some different section. Uh, I typically do the studio on my laptop. So what I can do from there is if I have an image that I want to put as an overlay or an image that, or video or an image that I want to put as your trigger image, I have them in my cloud, so I have them in, you know, Drive or Dropbox, whatever you use, and then I can put them on my device and use them as I please. With the studio account, I access it all from my computer. You can access it from your tablet. Um, I really haven't played with that a whole bunch, so that's a good question if for all of the people out there who are on their iPads and want to give it a shot. Um, I, I, did do a, I did do a session at uh, EdCamp 36, which is uh, Surrey, our neighboring district here, and I had a couple of people to go through the studio account to create their auras on their devices, and it didn't seem to be a problem for the people there, but I can't say for sure if it's completely stable on the device or not. I just like the fact that if you were to go ahead and create the content on the devices themselves and then even use the studio account on the devices is that you have the camera attached right there to be able to have that trigger image and to be able to take a picture of that trigger image um, rather than having another step to go ahead and upload or to go ahead and send that back on over to the your laptop to be able to go ahead and um, use it as a trigger image within the yeah. studio account. Yeah, and what I would recommend is if you're creating anything that's teacher-centered, so if you have something you want parents to see or you have something that you want an external audience to see, someone who wouldn't be signed into your account on their device, then that's when you use the studio account, and I would recommend using the devices for the kids because otherwise it's a whole lot more work for you because of what Craig is saying. There's those extra steps, and then you're the one who has to create the auras because you're logged in to the laptop. So. All right, so we're going to kind of go over how to create a studio account right now and then get you all signed in to other stuff. So I'm going to, again, put my screen share on the very front page of the Hangout now. And this is on my other computer, so I'm going to be flipping back and forth a little bit here. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you how to go through the process, just in case you're unfamiliar. So uh, we get started with going to erasma.com. Um, and we go to the Partners page, so right here. And once we go to the Partners page, you're going to click on um, Apply Now if you don't have an account already. Later on, when you go to go into this account, you're just going to go to logging into the Erasmus Studio when you already have your account. So I'm going to click on Apply Now. And it's going to pop you to the bottom of the page. I'll just wait for the Hangout to catch up to me here. And you're going to click on Please Register Here. So it's going to open a new window for you, and I'm just going to create an account for my elementary school. I want to go ahead and select New, because this is a new account that doesn't exist yet, and then it's going to give me a prompt to fill in all the information. So, And then for the type of applicant, you're going to want to go with education. And they also give that little survey of like where you've heard it from. So we're going to say from a friend or colleague. So once you create the account, it's going to give you, of course, the terms of use and things like that. I had a couple folks asking me about, oops, I had a couple folks asking me about privacy issues. Um, as far as privacy issues go, I know that one of their uh, one of their servers is located in the States, and there's another server located in the UK. So I'm not really sure. Like, you're obviously going to have to get the right permissions from parents and things like that when you go in. Um, oh, darn. It didn't let me. Do any of you guys actually have studio accounts already? I just signed up for one. Just I do now? have a studio account already. Yeah, and do you ever use it, Craig? I've tried to use it. 
I haven't used it quite as enough, enough within the classroom, and I'll admit that. Um, like I said, we, we actually do have a couple of projects where I'm looking, oh, this would be a great way to go ahead and augment. And so I will definitely be trying it out as well as blogging about it when I actually do put it into effect. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, I take it, Josh, you probably don't have one, huh? I just signed up for one as oh, you're okay. speaking. Okay, so for whatever reason, my guys decided I'm not, not allowed in, so I'm just going to go into my, my account so you guys can kind of see. I have more stuff in there anyway, so it's probably sure. better. Uh, so when you log in, there is this lovely little menu that pops up, and it is a fantastic, fantastic resource for help topics. So if you go into a uh, content tutorial, that's where you're popped into. You can click on all kinds of things, like channels, and it's going to go through what channels are for you. Um, trigger images, what is a trigger image? It's going to tell you all about those things. So it's kind of stealing the thunder of what the actual, what our session is about. If you do want to be a little bit keen and go explore some of those things, that's fine. Uh, it goes over overlays and what auras are. Um, and then there's all kinds of stuff like tips in my account and things like that. If you want to get out of this window, you can just exit or you can minimize it and it will just be hanging out down here at the bottom of your screen right here. All right. Is, is the Hangout catching up with me reasonably as I speak? Yes, it looks OK on the side. OK, good. <laughs> just want to make sure. All right, so once you get into the account, uh, you just want to kind of play and explore some of the toggles just a little bit. Um, so I'll just jump into some of my stuff. So here's some trigger images of things that are existing in my classroom so far. As I've said, my class creates their own on their devices. Um, so this is more of the teacher-centered stuff. So this is where you'd post your flipping homework stuff. This is where you'd post things like that, where not everything's in your uh, in your classroom on your devices. Um, here's the overlay images or videos or whichever I have. You can see I've got a Facebook and a Twitter one as well um, for overlay on top of our class icons as well as the, the West Langley one, which is our school one. But probably the most important part of this is your channels. So once I get, once I see it caught up here, here we are. Um, the channels are really important because you have um, two different, like I have two different channels, two different places where I post it. Mm -hmm. And whenever I create an aura, I have to add it to a channel. So remember the channel is just like following someone on Twitter. You want, when you create your channel, you have to remember people are following that channel. So you want your auras to be tailored towards your channel's title. So for example, I have Miss Olson's class, so I'm going to post everything pertaining to my class in that channel. But if it's something that has to do with my school as a whole, then I will post it into West Langley Elementary. So that probably makes a lot of sense. Um, typically, teachers are going to create one channel um, unless they have multiple classes. I know over the years that some teachers, I know Drew already has two different channels, one for last year's third graders that he's kept all the content, and then one for this year's fourth graders. All right, so is that clear as mud? <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned Drew. Yes. For <laughs> those that are not familiar on the EdTech Mentors Network, that would be Tech Minoc. And then so it's at Tech Minoc. And I'll go ahead and tweet that over there in the back channel. And then so Drew is part of um, an awesome duo who are like masters of augmented reality. And then so they are from two guys and, let's see, two guys and some iPads. IPad. And then yeah. so that would be <laughs> Tech Brad Wade and um, Tech Minoc. And then, again, I'll tweet that back over in the back channel, and maybe we'll have some show notes as well. Excellent. OK, so just so you guys know, too, once you sign into, once you're out of the studio account, just for tomorrow, that when you sign into the studio account, it is case sensitive. And when you sign into the Erasma app, it is case sensitive. And when I say it, I mean your username. Because there was one day where I was trying to teach, I don't know those of you who know Robin Thiessen, but she's this wonderful, now she's a grade four or five teacher, but she's this wonderful teacher in Surrey. And we were out for coffee one day, and she said, you got to show me this Erasma thing. you got to show me what it does. And so we spent probably 10 minutes of me trying to log into my account. And I didn't know that the Ms., the Victoria, and the Olsen were all capitalized. So, yeah, that was pretty 
pretty awesome. So just so you guys know, it is case sensitive. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is just get you guys all signed in on your iPads as well. Now, I'm using iOS. Um, I know that there are Android ones that work. Um, I haven't quite used them myself because I only have a Nexus 7, and that does not have a rear-facing camera, so a Rasna is not compatible with the Nexus. Um, I'm not sure which tablets of Android that Android has that do have one. Are you guys familiar? I, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I have <laughs> my. I have my S4, my Galaxy S4 phone. Mm-hmm. It has a re- that has a rear-facing one. <laughs> okay. Can you get the Erasmus app on it? I have it. Yep. I've used it on this phone before, so I know it works. Um, one think, of the questions that was in the back channels is what it is that people have been using as a whole to be able to create these um, things, whether or not we're in the one-to-one situation, or um, whether we have iPads or iPod uh, touches to check out. And then so I was just saying that I have in the back channel. I was just telling them that I have iPod touches, four of them that I was fortunate to get enough from donors choose, and we also have some iPads we're able to check out as a school, mm. be able to do some creation. Uh, for my classroom, when we when we did our first ORES, I only had four iPads in my classroom, so when the kids created their video, I had to actually send them out and about in groups, and they did them at different times, so it was kind of like a center. They had optional other activities to do, and at some point they had to hit the video center where they would create their video, and then I would assist them with uploading uh, their video onto the Aura. So, uh, yeah, it, it was a little bit intense. Now I'm two to one, which is really nice. Um, so I have 12 iPads in my room at all times. So Very that's nice. great. <laughs> so it's nice Wait, to have... Two to, let, me, let me get this straight here. You're <laughs> two to one. And let me do the math. I'm a fifth grade teacher. So two to <laughs> one, you got 12 iPads. You have 24 in your room? I have, yeah, I have 23 kids. So I say two to one because I don't want to break it down further. Well, I am at a public school and we have 34 within our room. No, that's not 34 oh. iPads. That's 34 students and we share the four devices. So. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that's, wow. Kudos. <laughs> um, yeah, and I mean, we have fantastic class size and composition stuff going on in BC. Like, we can't go over 24 if we have primary. So that's nice for us, um, but we have, we're one of the most technologically advanced schools in, in Langley at this time, and I know they're trying to really even that out, because um, there's some schools that don't even have robust Wi-Fi. I don't even have Wi-Fi, actually. Oh, wow. So there's there's definitely that, it's not, it's decentralized, right? So that's right. what happens. Yeah, so we'll just go over in the last five minutes. Um, over kind of how the app works and stuff like that. Um, I've created kind of a little video thing, so I'm going to go through some of the portions of it so you can see. So on the screen there is the Erasm app, so if you want to go ahead and download that on iOS. Um, I'll just let the video play. This is what happens when you open the app. It's going to take you through this lovely tutorial of how to, again, how to do it, what auras are, things like that. Um, and then how you can overlay them. So how you can follow channels, and I'm just going to go over little parts of of that for you guys. And then how you can share. And, of course, we talked about the studio account being how you can share to people externally who are not a part of your, um, who aren't going to be signed into your account. So when you get to this page, you can also create your account from this page and then link it to your studio account, but... If we've created a studio account already, you just log in with your studio account and it's there. So um, I think for this one I logged into a different account. So yeah, I did the BC Ed Chat account. There's some meta stuff for you. <laughs> All right, so just go re- through really quick some of the features of the app. Um, that little A at the very bottom where that red thing is where you'll click back Um, to get that menu that's popped up. If you ever want to go away from that menu, you're going to click on that middle button. Um, So right about here, this middle button, uh, my mouse is not caught up, but that middle button there will bring you back to the viewfinder. So on this on this page on the, where you're clicked on the little A, you're going to see different auras. You're going to see featured people. These are the public things. These are things that everybody can see um, or ones that you've viewed. So these are ones that I've viewed on my account. 
um, when you click the plus button right there, it's going to prompt you to go take, make your own aura on your device. So that's something we're going to be covering tomorrow. So I'll just get out of that. And there's some stock stuff you can put on top if you just want to play with it a little bit. And this little, oopsies, I went too far too fast there. This little magnifying glass right here is where you search for people. So if you want to search my channel, if you want to search uh, Drew's channel, I think his is Mr. Minox fourth grade right now. Uh, he's a really good example of people to follow. And if you go to his website, he's got lots of samples there. So I've just typed in Victoria Olson, and there's my classic account. On here, there is going to be an option to follow. You can like someone's channel, or you can also share the channel with other people. So let's say you're using it in your classroom as a communication tool. Uh, you can share that channel with other parents that way. And then last but not least, so on the bottom toggle is the profile. So this is your or where your auras would be listed. This is your account information and the people that you're following. So that's just a little tour of the app. Um, so I hope that helps a little bit for the people who are not sure about it. All right. Do you guys have any questions about the app tour? Seemed to work just fine. I followed along right with you on there. I, I followed you while you were doing that, so not too bad. I'm looking forward to playing around with this tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. And tomorrow is more hands-on. Tomorrow is going to be we're actually creating... How, how do you like that meta image, hey? Um, <laughs> we're going to be creating some stuff tomorrow. Uh, I'm just going to turn off the screen share. Uh, we're going to be creating some auras tomorrow, both in the studio, both in the studio account and... Uh, and in the device. So then you guys will have some opportunities to kind of experiment with both and get a feel for what each of them is capable of. Awesome. All right. So Very do we have cool. any questions from the back channel so far or anything as we kind of close the show for tonight? There was one more share um, out and then just as to how it is that Erasmo was being used. And then so there's been a number of where it is that Aaron Klein had an awesome example and that was shared within our own little chat window right on over here. And then Steve Clark over on Twitter was saying that um, that something about swimming with patents. And then so that's something that I'll have to go ahead and click on. And then maybe we can go ahead and include that within our show notes as well. Um, Cut it out there on me. I lost Craig. Did you guys lose Craig? <laughs> yeah, he appears frozen in time, or he's very deep in concentration. Not <laughs> sure. You know, Victoria, if I could jump in here, I, I was rather curious how people are using the augmented reality programs. Um, this one, perhaps Layer, uh, Eris is another one that I've been working with to kind of supplement textbooks to bring the textbook alive. Actually bringing Drew and Brad back up, there's some great examples of some 3D apps that have been developed for this. Um, as far as bringing the textbook to life through Layer and Erasmus and things like that, if you're talking student created content, um, obviously that would be a lot of the stuff we discussed tonight. But they're developing, Brad and Drew are developing an app called the Planets app. And, and they can actually take your trigger image, the planets all pop up, the solar system pops up on your desk, and the kids can actually interact with each of the planets, open them, get facts, things like that. So there are some cool things on their way. And if you're familiar with Daiquiri, they have uh, some a bunch of cool stuff for chemistry. Um, as far as, uh, Josh, have you used the, the Daiquiri cubes before? I, I have not. I think... Um, when I first saw earlier last year, um, two guys and some iPads, uh, they're like one of their demo videos actually used the cube, and I'm like, holy cow, that's crazy. Uh, but I've never myself used yeah. one. Okay, they're really neat. I've seen them in person. They're pretty cool. But they're essentially these cubes, and they're taking, um, they have elements etched onto the sides of them, and they're a trigger image to change them into um, what the elements would, would not look like, but they, they mock the elements in that they bond with each other and they create new. Uh, 
molecules and things like that. So there's there's some neat stuff on the way there, but I haven't seen a lot of student created stuff in that light. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I, I think that's the key. Yeah. If, if it can be something that students are creating. I think that's what we want to go towards. So I think Erasma does that. Yeah, and I think you can do the same thing with Layer. I'm just not as familiar with Layer. Luckily, this week on um, one of my grad courses, we're talking about augmented reality. They are using the Layer app as a part of their project. So I'll get a little more familiar with it this week as I consume some of their content. That would be nice. Awesome. All right, so I think we're probably good for tonight. Um, we'll leave it on that note. I will be sharing the show notes for tomorrow, the outline on the Google Plus community and via Twitter again. I'll be pre-scheduling some of my tweets there again. So for those of you I didn't answer, I apologize. That's why I've been busy with this stuff, so I'll come back and check my Twitter feed now. Um, so thank you to, to Craig, John, Josh, and Scott for popping in and helping me out tonight. I really appreciate that. It's nice to have a buffer when <laughs> tech goes sideways. So I really look forward to chatting with you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.